I'd like to tell you about something I'm really excited about. It's called Android, and it's a new open source operating system and software platform for mobile phones. Just like I learned how to write great services and software upon free tools for the web, like Linux and GNU, uh, now with Android, you'll be able to do the exact same things on mobile phones. Android is uh, you know, basically an opportunity to, to uh, make a better phone. The G phone is really this great moniker that the press has put onto Android. Well, this is the G phone. There's no such thing as a single G phone. Okay, this is not the G phone. What we're doing is enabling an entire industry to create thousands of G phones. We've set aside $10 million, which we're going to give away to the people who develop the best applications using Android. I was there at the original launch of the event in New York. It was out on the east side at this event space. The most notable thing, obviously, Larry Page, Sergey Brin coming in halfway through the presentation on rollerblades, rollerblading up, saying that they had actually rollerbladed across town to get to the event. Today we have your first look at the T-Mobile G1. Now, as most of you know, the G1 is the first smartphone to run the Google operating system. The open source platform allows developers to create all sorts of applications. You'll be able to purchase and download these over the air from the Android market. At launch, they're thinking they'll have about 35 applications available in the catalog, and we were actually able to get some games and utilities like Pac-Man and AccuWeather over the 3G network, and it was pretty good and fast. The latest developer version of Google's Android 2.0 operating system for smartphones has arrived. It's codenamed Donut and has many long-awaited features, including universal Android search, text-to-speech, CDMA support for non-GSM carriers, and now gesture support. For a long time, we've been complaining that the two biggest drawbacks of Android are it didn't allow you to uh, store apps on external memory, and you couldn't do any voice dialing over Bluetooth. Fortunately, Froyo fixes both of those, so it's really, really great. Hook up a Bluetooth headset, and make sure your headset, of course, <laughs> supports voice dialing over Bluetooth. Uh, just hit the headset, as you normally would, and you can dial by number or by contact name. So, worked pretty well. On the app storage front, uh, yes, you can take an app and you can install it on the external memory card. All you need to do is just go into the settings menu, click the applications, go to manage applications. We'll go into the Google Sky Maps that we've downloaded, hit that, and you see there's a button for moving to SD card. And then uh, once you have it there and you want to move it back, we'll just go to this paper toss, you can see there's a move to phone. So transferring it back and forth is pretty uh, easy. So really, really nice to see both of those options. Hey, I'm Donald Bell for CNET.com. We are at Google's Android Honeycomb event. There's some Motorola Zoom tablets inside that are running Honeycomb. I'm going to go inside and check it out and see what Honeycomb can do. I saw this at CES, but you can actually touch or play around with it. I was curious to see that there's a notification window, and that's now kind of got the general uh, settings down here at the bottom, too, so that you don't have to dive into the actual full settings menu. Exactly. And this is cool too, you're getting a two-pane view of everything. Exactly, so this is again using the concept of the fragments which break up the screen into multiple pieces. Yeah. There have been some changes to the actual uh, keyboard functionality, like there's multi-touch now, you can have, you know, you, know, you can see, you can do things like that. Um, at the same time, there's there, there's some other changes, they're, they're kind of more minor, mm -hmm. um, but the keyboard okay. has had a big kind of revamp. The new Android operating system has several notable changes, such as instant talk to type and some camera improvements. The front camera can track eye movement and rotate an image based on where the user looks. And if there are two people hovering over the front facing video chat camera, it'll focus on the person who's talking. Also, Android seems to have borrowed from the best of the competition. Much like a Windows phone, the new Android has people tiles and a stream of social media updates in the People app. And much like HP's WebOS, if you're done with the screen, you could just flick it away. But one unique change, you could unlock a screen using the front camera to detect your face. Let's just hope you don't have an evil twin. Arguably one of the most important features of KitKat is something you can't even see. Google shrunk the size of the operating system to run on devices with 512 megabytes of RAM. That means that low-end budget devices can run KitKat instead of the now outdated 2.3 gingerbread or 4.0 ice cream sandwich. 
That's a huge step forward from Google in helping create a universal Android experience no matter what phone you buy. On to the features that you can see. There's a redesigned home screen with larger icons and condensed text. The top satisfier is now transparent and blends with your wallpaper. There's a new home screen menu where you can change the wallpaper, add widgets, and access your Google search settings. The app drawer is also transparent, and as you can see, there's no longer a section for widgets. Android 6.0 Marshmallow is out now, and it's got several cool new tricks. But I'm here to check out the best feature of them all, Google Now on Tap. This is a new way to use Google Search. It displays cards with extra info and application shortcuts on top of whatever you're doing. Just press and hold the home button on your Android to activate it. Good morning. Welcome to Google I.O. As of this week, we crossed over 2 billion active devices of Android. Seriously, 2 billion active devices is incredible. And that's just smartphones and tablets. We're also seeing new momentum in areas such as TVs and cars and watches and laptops and beyond. Google has officially released a named Android. Are you ready for some Android Pie? If you've got a Pixel or Essential phone, you might already be enjoying a slice, as Android Pie is already starting to roll out to those devices. The software update comes with a wide variety of updates to help smooth performance, increase battery life, and offer overall quality of life upgrades for users via background AI. Tech Addiction is also addressed via a new dashboard that shows information and options about your use habits. It's amazing we're here to talk about Android's version 10. And we get to celebrate a milestone together. Today, there are over 2.5 billion active Android devices. And today, we want to walk you through what's coming next in Android Q. Innovation, security, and privacy, the central theme of the Q release, and digital well-being. The Pixel phones run Android 11. The devices do preview something called Hold For Me, which lets Assistant take your place when you're on hold, so you don't have to listen to crappy hold music. And it notifies you when a real person is back on the line. The native recorder app also has more tricks up its sleeve since the last time we took a look at it on the Pixel 4a. I'm not too sure why Google has really leaned in on this app, but as someone who uses it all the time for taking notes, I'm not complaining. You can now copy or remove chunks of audio and create a cool little graphic if you want to share some quote or audio snippet on social media. 
Android 12 is one of our most ambitious releases ever. There are three big themes that we're focused on. First, smartphones are deeply personal, and we think your phone should adapt to you, not the other way around. Second, to keep your personal information safe, the OS should be secure by default and private by design. And third, we want all of your devices, TVs, cars, watches, and more, to work better together with your phone at the center. Many interactions have been simplified and system spaces purposefully reimagined. Starting from the lock screen, the design is more playful with dynamic lighting. Pick up your phone and it lights up from the bottom of your screen. Press the power button to wake up the phone instead and the light ripples out from your touch. Even the clock is in tune with you. When you don't have any notifications, it appears larger on the lock screen, so you know you're all caught up. Just this week, we crossed an amazing milestone. There are now three billion active Android devices around the world. 